Intel has been talking about their Alchemy GPUs for a while, and I was lucky enough to be able to get my hands on one of these on pre-order. This is the Intel Arc A380. It's got six gigs of RAM and it's overclocked. I paid 139 for this, and I am really curious to see how this will perform. Let's unbox it. Now, before opening it up, I do want to go over a couple of things. The XESS upscaling is potentially a game changer. And I say potentially because we don't know really how well that's going to work. But in essence, the theory is to be able to go ahead and take a game that is only playing at 1080p on like medium settings and upscale how it looks up to like 4K and having more image quality. Meaning that a cheaper card like this, although you might have settings set lower on it, might actually look better and perform better than the same title on a NVIDIA or AMD card that is configured with higher settings for that same exact game. Now, just to go over the features here on the box, it's the Intel Arc A380 and has six gigs of RAM and it has three display ports and one HDMI port. Opening up the box, just have foam here on the top and this GPU. So a quick installation guide. There we go, it is the Challenger. And here we have the single HDMI and then three display ports. Now we have this little protector here. Go ahead and take off plastic. And then we have the eight pin connector right here for power. And it just says Intel Arc on the side. It's interesting is this uh, heat sink looks kind of like a slightly larger heat sink that comes with a stock Intel i-series processor. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to remove this and take it apart, show you guys what's under the hood. Now, another interesting thing about this, supposedly you will be able to pair this with, I believe it is a 10th generation or newer Intel processor that has built-in integrated graphics that will, in essence, combine with what's on the card here. Currently, I'm going to toss this into my AMD 5950X, and I'm currently running a NVIDIA 3070 Ti. Now, I've done some benchmarks with the 3070 Ti, and now I'm gonna go do some benchmarks with this guy. Originally, I read online that if you had a 10th gen Intel processor or newer, that you could pair up the integrated GPU with a Intel Arc GPU as well. And unfortunately, that is not the case. As you can see in this picture here, where my son was playing a game, it does not use both GPUs. Now, I did find another article that I'll link down below that apparently Intel will do dual GPUs with certain applications. So if it's not specifically supported, then it won't be able to use both GPUs at the same time. Now for the benchmarks. I did use the latest beta driver for the Intel Arc A380 GPU, which is version 31.0.101.3276, and that was released on August 26th of 2022. Now in 3D Mark, it scored 4368 with the latest drivers. The integrated graphics on the i5-12600K, which is the UHD Graphics 770, scored a measly 867 on 3D Mark. Now the Intel Arc A380 GPU scored 4,387, while a Radeon RX Vega 56 Flash 264 went ahead and got 6,980 points. Now if you look at a older NVIDIA 1050 Ti, it only scores a 2513. So compared to the 4387 for about the same price point, you can kind of see where Intel might be a decent choice for a lot of consumers. Now I will say that during the initial install, I couldn't get the regular drivers to install. I had to install the beta drivers. Then after a couple of days, 
newer beta drivers came out. Now, what's kind of interesting is that on my son's computer, because he has the integrated graphics as well, the Intel utility for the ARC card actually says that there is a update and that update version is no longer a beta, it is a regular release. However, that particular driver only supports integrated graphics and doesn't support the ARC GPUs, which is funny because it's the Intel ARC utility that says there's an update that is available. Now, personally, I think Intel has a ways to go with their drivers as well as working with manufacturers to be able to harness all the capabilities of their new GPU lineup. A great example is Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI. Now Intel has a official video showing that Topaz Labs is able to utilize all of these new features on their GPU, uh, namely the XESS for the AI upscaling. When I installed Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI, and that is version 2.6.4, and I couldn't get it to work. It was only using the CPU and not the GPU. So I reached out to Topaz Labs and opened a ticket, and they informed me that I should use the beta version 3. So I did, and that didn't work either. Now it turns out neither version will work, and Topaz Labs did finally admit that, but we had to go back and forth and waste a decent amount of time on that. They do promise that they are working closely with Intel to be able to produce the most amount of performance on these GPUs using their products, and I am excited to see that when it happens. Now this kind of reminds me when the Apple M1 chip first came out and manufacturers were behind the curve on having their software being compatible with it. Now some additional benchmarks that I did were using Filmora 11 and also Premiere Pro. And unfortunately, Video Enhance AI, which I took a text in motion video uh, sample that was 576p and upscaled it to 4K, on my 3070 Ti, it took five minutes, 26.6 seconds. But on the A380, sadly, it's not supported yet. Now jumping over to Filmora, I have a 4K re-render over to HEVC. On my 3070 Ti, it took 35 seconds. For my video rendering benchmarks, I downloaded a UHD 4K HDR test file that's called LG New York HDR UHD 4K Demo.zip. And I'll link that down in the description below if you guys want to try it out yourselves. But in Filmora 11, I re-rendered that 4K video to HEVC, and on the 3070 Ti, it took 35.24 seconds, and on the A380, it took 17.18 seconds. That's nuts. Now doing the same tests, but on H.264, it took 15.06 seconds on a 3070 Ti, and on the A380, it took 17.2 seconds. Now this next benchmark was really interesting. It's because it uses the AV1 codec. Now, I don't really want to go into details on it, but basically it is more efficient than HEVC. And Intel has the very first card that is hardware accelerated for this. On my 3070 Ti, it took 1 minute and 10.5 seconds for it to re-render that clip. And on the A380, it took 19.81 seconds. That is impressive. This is a $139 card. Now jumping over to Premiere Pro, I did the same exact re-render and rendering it out as HEVC. On my 3070 Ti, it took 22.66 seconds. The A380 took 27.24 seconds. And rendering out as H.264 on my 3070 Ti, it took 21.89 seconds, and on the A380, it took 21.46 seconds. Overall, if you're a creator, this card might be of interest to you, especially for this price point. Now think about it, for 139 bucks, you get similar performance to a 3070 Ti, which is 799. You can buy five of these cards for that price. So who is this card for then? Well, if you're a budget-strapped content creator, definitely it's something that you may want to consider if you don't want to break the bank and have blistering performance on rendering videos. Now, what about gaming? Now, my son has been playing Ark Survivor Evolved and Rust, and both of those titles seem to be locking up sometimes, or the machine just like freezes and kind of shuts off eventually. But again, I'm running the beta drivers on it, and Intel still has a lot of room to improve on it. And even when I had the card in my system, overall it was pretty stable, but it seems like it has something to do with the sleep states. When the machine goes ahead and slows itself down, then it just kind of gets wonky. So I noticed on my 5950X, if I left the machine running and it just went into a sleep mode by itself, it was a coin toss on whether or not it would come back up for me. Now, as soon as I switched back to my 3070, that problem went away completely. So again, pointing back to Intel's drivers. Now, if you do plan on buying an Intel Arc-based card for either gaming or content creation, 
you may want to hold out a little bit, either for the drivers to be more stable and supported by major titles, because right now there's only like 14 titles, I believe, that are supported by the XESS upscaling algorithm, and they're going to have more powerful cards coming out to compete against AMD and NVIDIA. And by introducing a new blue titan to the arena, I see both AMD having to step up their game and NVIDIA holding back future inventory of the 4000 series GPUs will have more pressure to go ahead and release on time and on schedule with available stock. So even if AMD and NVIDIA do another paper release this time around, like they did last time, Intel, if they can bring the performance to the table, I think is a real threat to them. Now, if there's any certain games or applications that you want me to benchmark with this particular card, drop it in the comment section down below and I will do that in a future video. Also up here, once it's available, I'll go ahead and have a playlist just for the Intel Arc GPUs. And I'll catch you in the next one.